Look at the flags. Hey, buddy. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey, hey. Oh, cool. Oh, got a rough road again. At least, at least it's not boring. Wow, this place is just gorgeous. Okay. We're gonna stop up ahead. It's drone time. Yo! Amazing. I'm going to show you the location. Here I'm opening the snacks so I can sit down, have a quick bite. I just could not possibly pass this place. So many things like this all around Thailand. This is how you get to know the local, just like the town life, you know. This is basically the town shop, town central shop. In the morning, you come to buy your fresh vegetables. You can buy all your breakfast stuff right here, curries. And look what I got. I'm having some soy milk. You know what? I honestly don't know what this is. We gotta taste it first. That's why I opened both. Both are sticky rice. This one looks like it has eggs, but I don't know what this is. Having it with some nam tahu, and that was 17 baht. Like a perfectly clean and totally natural wrapper. This is what all wrappers should be. Oh wow. That is so sweet. Mm. That is the energy I need. Oh wow. So coconut cream on sticky rice, and that is like a custard. It's got to be egg steamed. Maybe some more sugar. Oh, it's so simple and so good. Okay, but then the other one is grilled. Let's try this. You know what? This might be fish, actually. Mm. Oh, yeah. See, I'm too excited. I'm touching it. That is amazing. It's salty. It's a little bit rich not sweet at all. Oh, that is amazing. The smokiness is amazing. What a snack. So simple. It's a little oily on that outside. The softness just goes perfectly with that. Soy milk, oh, a very gentle soy milk. And also smoky. This location just can't be beat. Okay, I do have my bike bag and I do have the drone. So while I am sitting down to enjoy the last few minutes of this, we're gonna get back on the road, but I'm gonna give you some drone shots first, so enjoy. The scenery here is just incredible. What a picture-perfect view of southern Thailand. So I am still in Krabi province. I'm riding on the way to Surat Thani, another place I've never been before. Oh, it feels like a great start to another great day down in the south. Check that out, oh man. Okay, I guess. Every, every year there's got to be a few rides where the body gets used to the regular Thailand again. Besides waking you up in the morning, caffeine also takes away a little bit of the pain in the muscles. It's true. Uh, no cyclist would ever accept this, but caffeine uh, has been talked about as being banned because of the performance enhancement that it gives you. But there are many legal performance enhancements. Coffee is definitely my favorite, but uh, sugar, I guess you could say sugar is a performance enhancer. And I've got, I've got some sugar in this. Wow, it is just brutal. You saw 41 degrees outside, so I'm gonna stay here for a few minutes. It is time for room number three. Just got back from the morning ride. Park her right there. View from outside, you can see it is maximum sunshine. <laughs> I'm gonna take a shower. Let's go see the room. 
after the shower, of course. <sighs> okay, made my snack, soy milk, some oatmeal, some flax seeds and raisins, and I'm gonna take a few bites of this and you can check out the room. <laughs> Enjoy. So you can see ample space for bike parking. I love how clean, how tidy the room. Basically, it has everything that I would want, especially for a bike trip. But even this room is just well set up for any trip. <laughs> so this box, some things in Thailand are not so cheap anymore, but some things they are still as cheap as you could ever dream them to be. Domestic shipping. So one trick that I have learned for bicycle trips and tours, it is amazing. Just pack a care package, mail it to yourself. All you gotta do is book on Agoda. Usually the hotel will give you the address and you just send them some mail. It takes at most two days. Sometimes I've even had it just overnight and you do not have to pay extra for that. This was 19 kilograms of stuff. Maybe I've eaten some of the oatmeal, but okay. 19 kilograms, do you want to guess how much it cost? Including the box, which was 30, I think 35 baht, so a dollar and 15 cents. This was 77 baht. So including the box, it was three US dollars, 19 kilograms. That is 38, 43 pounds, 43 pounds. So of course my mother just in, in other memories, my mother has sent me a pack of cookies from, I think she, where was she? I think she was in Missouri. She sent a pack of cookies from Missouri to Thailand. And I think that was $12. A pack of cookies might weigh one pound, $12 for 43. So 170 times cheaper to mail something in Thailand as it costs to mail something to Thailand. It is unbelievable. That's one trick you gotta remember. Wait, 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 not so fast, Joel. What did you mail? I know someone is gonna ask that question, so here you go. I'm gonna dump it out all on the bed. Right. Boom, there you go. Basically, what didn't you mail, Joel? <laughs> so this all right here is bike stuff, and actually the, the team hooked me up with some more stuff. I knew that was coming, so I didn't need to bring as much food. You still see, I still brought uh, two kilograms of oatmeal, dates, raisins, sunflower seeds, flax seeds right there. So I am confident that I had that taken care of. Breakfast is the most important thing to me, speaking of food. So I have that taken care of. I have extra cycling clothes. These are snacks to have on the bike. Some cycling stuff, sun, yes, whew, sun cream, Vaseline, extra water bottle. And then the big ticket item right there, a blender. Yes, I did indeed mail myself the coffee grinder and along with that boom coffee so this why did i do that <laughs> to save money honestly breakfast it's going to save a few dollars coffee it's going to save a ton of money anywhere you are in the world making your own coffee it's going to be a lot cheaper than going out to a coffee shop and in in thailand coffee is incredible and it's just going out of control it's beautiful but it is not cheap Having coffee at coffee shops is gonna be three or four times the same price as if I buy. Little things like this have helped me to retain my sanity when I am on the road more than I'm at home. You know, those of you who do work from the road, you you know what I'm talking about. There are, there are just some things that are lost when you're always traveling, always. And that's that's also why I don't really like to use the, the word travel because sometimes for me, I just cannot wait to get back to, to be in one bed for more than two nights in a row, you know? Anyways, <laughs> so there is my little tip for travel within Thailand, for getting around on the bicycle within Thailand and still having a clean, budget-friendly, delicious, and healthy way to do things. <laughs> okay, next topic. And just to show you some daily life items, this is a ran sapa. Sak is wash, pa is clothing or cloth, and this is what a shop looks like, maybe similar to many countries. And the price for these large drums here is 40 baht, behind 30 baht, and then sometimes even 20 baht if you're lucky. This one even has free Wi-Fi, but because it's already noon, I am just, I'm almost sweating just standing here. So I am gonna go back to that coffee shop that I just passed, and I have 
the motorbike, as you remember, and we're gonna go and have a coffee. This is awesome. Fratello House, the name of the coffee shop. Ordered an Americano, it was 50 bucks. Comes with some cookies. Beautiful color of blue right there. That is interesting, like a watermelon. It smells more on the dark side, so to get a sweet note like that, it's like a berry. That is a great flavor combination right there. Watermelon chocolate is what I'm gonna say. Wow. Man, it has been a great day, it is a warm day, but I'm so thankful to be here. And it is lunchtime, look at this. Just by the look of it, you can see how fun and how many flavors are coming at you. For single plates, you can't do much better. When you want a full mix of all the flavors that Thailand has to offer than this plate right here, Kao. So it's named after the rice. Kao just means rice. And then kokapi is what they do with the rice. It is shrimp paste put right down in the center of the plate and all these colors, this rainbow of flavor just goes all around it. You got sweet sausage, bright fiery chili. That's the Thai chili, pick jin da. This one. The snake peas, purple shallots or red onions. And then you got green mango. It's gonna be really sour. Over here you have egg, oily, and then the pork. And that pork is gonna be sweet and rich. So I am not gonna just dump this all over the rice. Oh, wow, it smells so awesome though. Okay, so it is gonna be like a sweet, maybe some dry spices like cinnamon in there. So I'm just gonna take some of the pork and put it on top of the rice. Wow. You gotta take a giant bite to get one <laughs> bite with every ingredient, but you're gonna wanna mix it up, right? So take, how about we do half? So moving the rice over, taking all the chilies. This is just awesome and so aromatic, really starting with that shrimp rice. And fermented shrimp paste is something you are gonna learn to love in north of Malaysia, south of Thailand. So many different dishes just rely on that, that mix of the pungent fermented fragrance and the, the saltiness of the shrimp paste. Mm. <laughs> it has been way too long since I've had this dish. Oh my gosh. Mm. Honestly, it's an extreme saltiness and just wonderful fragrance of that rice. But then it's cut with all these other really fresh, wonderful ingredients. So mm. that mango combining with the fatty pork is honestly out of control. Mm. And that rice, oh wow. Now the chili is starting to kick. Mm. Next bite. Mm. It's unbelievable, the blend. How do they do it? I mean, in the center, in the northeast, in the north, there are already hundreds, maybe even more than a thousand dishes. I still don't know them all. And in the south, there's even another entire region that I know almost nothing about. This dish is incredible. Let's get some onions in that next bite. Oh, there's some of the small shrimp right there. Yeah, it's slightly, slightly ridiculous how comforting that really fatty pork is. Mm. So in Thai, that cut is called Mu Sam Chan, three level pork or three story pork. Mm. Those chilies are bright, but the red onion actually, I think might be the more, more spicy thing on this plate. Wow, just that wonderful gaseous, just like a pinch in the back of your throat, in the back of your nose. It's awesome. Mm. Oh, the self, they've outdone themselves with genius creations like this. And there's another one called Kao Yang that I have an entire video all on its own, which equals this dish for sure. Mm. Mm. So, obviously, I am not out on the street, and this is definitely not a traditional Thai restaurant. Some dishes like this are still amazing, even if you have them at, at a coffee shop right here. I mean, there's 
there's a kitchen in the back and they are Thai. They are making Thai food, but this is just a little bit of a tame version of what you might have on the street. But in the end, what I, what I want to say is, I love this dish, and if this is the version that you find yourself able to try, then please order Kao Klu Kapi. It is still delicious, and I love this dish at this restaurant right now. And actually, the price is great, and the atmosphere cannot be beat. Honestly, this coffee shop is so fun, and it is a blazing hot day outside, and if you know, if that's the only chance that you do have to have Kao Klu Kapi, I would go for it still. I am feeling a little bit slow uh, this dish is it's a they gave a big portion so I'm actually gonna order another coffee and then we are gonna sit right over there and continue our chat nice one so if you are curious about the general details that is pretty easy to tell you so for the whole month I've actually spent about exactly 1,000 US dollars that included the plane flight from the center of Thailand all the way down to the south that included bringing my bicycle with me I had to buy a bike box to bring that bicycle with me and then I had to book hotels I had to eat and then on the way besides that maybe just a forgotten toothbrush or something like that here and there yeah it totals to just about 1,000 US dollars so, so the flight round trip from Konken to Hat Yai back to Konken it's a direct flight and the round trip was 4,800 baht and add 1,000 for the bike both ways so the bike is 500 baht and remember that's domestic so that's why it's so cheap and then the bike box that I bought for the bike was 9,000 baht and that's a local company right here so that's also a pretty good deal that's like 300 US dollars and the the air flight would be about 150 160 US dollars round trip uh, food also uh, on average I spend about four sometimes 500 baht per day and that's usually including one stop at 7-eleven I'll spend about 50 or 60 baht that means a banana a soy milk maybe two waters uh, maybe two bananas um, and then food yeah maybe a hundred to yeah about a hundred baht per meal gets a lot of food in Thailand that's that's a <laughs> if you're eating street food that's a huge amount of food um, and you can just calculate that budget on and on eventually of course you're gonna run into some other costs and I had about five I rounded it off to 5,000 baht so another 150 US dollars just in other things like yeah like I said a lost toothbrush or soap or uh, washing clothes which I shared a clip of earlier yeah little things of course over a month you're gonna have many more different random expenses than you would just on a weekend trip I mean this is a whole month of life and occasionally you do have to do some daily life stuff too like if there's no Wi-Fi I upgraded my phone card for example for a day or two and that is about one that's about a dollar a dollar fifty US per day to get the, the boost where the laptop can go through the phone to use the wireless oh yeah another one a VPN I just had a thought this is where the sponsorship for the VPN ad would come in right here <laughs> so I I got a VPN which makes travel just just much more comfortable right that works out to be about eight or nine dollars a month which for the peace of mind that your your data is safe when you're just cruising around staying at every coffee shop under the sun just logging into Wi-Fi yeah it gives you just that that calmness I guess and confidence that you're not gonna go home and find some different information has been stolen Have fun. <laughs> Don't hit any birds. <laughs> 